601 and the conservation commission just comes to order. First order of business is the approval of minutes from the last meeting. I've looked them over and I have no comments. No comments from me either. Mr. Degler, have you had a chance to look them um, over? No, I wasn't here at the last one. Oh, that's right. Yep. Were you here? You're, no, okay. Is there a motion? I think you have to abstain since we weren't here. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I would motion to accept the um, meeting minutes as is. Okay, there's a motion to accept as is. Strange seconding my own. <laughs> Good job. All right, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Okay, motion passes. Um, we only have one set of minutes. Okay. Um, I should have uh, said this at the outset of the meeting, but is anyone interested in voting to move the um, conditional use permits um, such that Mr. Osher um, goes before the introduction to land use item? I would. There's, a, there's one motion. Is there a second? No. Okay. All in favor? Okay. All right. Public comment. There seems to be no one here for public comment. Um, so the next order of business is conditional use permit requests. Tammy Drosher is seeking to amend an existing CUP 08-2022 to add enhanced erosion control and ensure safe access to the backyard and return original shrubs and plants and various other improvements, including a shed, maintenance to existing structures, landscaping, and site maintenance to the property located at 14 Westman Street in the residential single-family district assessor's map 25, lot 48C, CUP 08-2023. Please come up. So just to um, put this in context, this was, uh, we, we heard a, um, a CUP earlier for this. Uh, as you can see, it's 03-2023. Uh, um, and so this is a, a request to um, amend that. Correct. Right. I was here last year. Yes. Um, I've had some work done along the Flynn side of my property. <clears throat> um, there was quite um, a ditch running along that property and it was um, the erosion was getting very close to my foundation um, at that time there was only maybe six feet four feet four to six feet from the furthest corner of my of my foundation and it was dropping seven to eight feet deep and it was running along Flynn Street so I I was I worked with Norway Plains and and you guys and um, it was determined to be wetlands so we did all of that paperwork and and went through all of that process to get the approval to do a partial fill so that I could <clears throat> stabilize and and level out that soil um, with the work done now and, and kind of where I'm, the first piece that I'm here about tonight is with the work done now that's the the part that we maintained for the wetlands the original plan had a slope from my backyard into the wetlands and I think originally or or when we were looking at the plan when I was looking at the plan I expected that slope to be not as drastic and as not as close to the foundation the, the piece of the foundation that I was actually trying to even more so stabilize and now that the work, the, the excavation is done, the filling is done, there's still quite a, a deep slope there. And I haven't really gained any, any land, any, um, any, any kind of um, flat surface off that backside of the, the foundation. 
um, I'm about at six feet before it starts to slope and it goes down quite a bit again steeper than I anticipated so the first piece that I'm looking to do and and I apologize I didn't you know I, I know I'm not Norway Plains and I'm not an expert in this so bear with me um, <clears throat> what I would like to do is actually build three tiered walls to try to level out and <clears throat> and help reduce erosion that last tier would actually land about 12 feet from that that point of the foundation by the time I do the rocks and you know have some kind of <clears throat> shrubbery or I think I'm proposing hostas to run along that to kind of stabilize that soil it'll give me about 10 feet from that corner of the house and I think that will give me great you know better access to the backyard and help stabilize that soil so that I can get away from this erosion that I've been fighting up against so so that's the first piece that I'm looking to do um, I've marked up I think that on that on the plan where I'm looking for those walls to go they'll only be about two foot two foot tall with um, a three foot landing in in between now, some of this work is already done it, it is and, and I apologize I did not realize the requirements to follow the slope and I've actually I actually did start that work last fall um, if you want to travel out there you can see what I've been doing um, how I'm working it I've been collecting rocks from all my neighbors um, Westman and Flynn Street is amazing so you'll see how many excess rocks there were in the neighborhood because they're all <laughs> they're all over there right now um, with their permission I hope Oh, yeah. yes, 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 yes. <laughs> um, once they heard what I was trying to do and saw what I was trying to do, they, they um, more than offered them all up. So um, there is some riprap that I've had delivered, and, and that is for stabilizing behind the rocks. And then there's, um, there's um, um, wood chips that I've been using to just fill in lay across the top of the landings um, I used the I had some erosion control that was there um, as part of the work I've been using that to try to keep myself away from the wetlands and not drop anything and and keep my lines where they need to be um, so that that's the first piece that I'm looking to do so going back to the initial plan um, the impetus for the plan was to um, prevent further erosion from the foundation correct or, uh, from getting closer to the foundation correct and um, so Norway Plains uh, came up with the plan to fill well to put to lay um, a culvert so there's a there's a drainage um, area at the the other side of the street that, um, that goes under the street um, onto your property correct um, right and then um, it had just been a, a regular outflow from there but pipe was laid and then covered correct um, and uh, this picture here is fr is actually from the Norway's plane the base of this and there was, like, like he's explaining, there's a drainage, there was a drainage pipe, a Summersworth drainage pipe that was originally just <clears throat> up, at the, up at the furthermost corner of Flynn and Westman was just emptying and that was creating this erosion over 30 years or so. Um, so the plan was to do that. So there's been a, a new pipe installed, an outlet um, crushed gravel everything that was according to the plan and and filled over to the Flynn side of the property and that's a drainage easement it is okay. yeah um, does everyone remember this mm -hmm. no I don't think I was here yet yeah. <clears throat> um, So I remember it. Um, so Norway, Norway Plains had come up with this plan, um, and 
we had decided at that time, you know, along with Norway Plains, that, that that grade would have been enough to prevent erosion. It's a much gentler slope than it was, right? The upper part, yes, it, it, absolutely. The the upper part, the part that we filled in, is is wonderful. I mean, we when we have rev heavy rains, it does run down down the. Um, down the lawn, if you want to call it. But I think that's the intent, right, is to, you know, some of it runs from Flynn, runs down the street, some of it, some of it runs from Francor, hits Westman, comes into this part of the property and does run onto the land so that it can be absorbed and, and dispersed, I guess, there. So the, the slope there, I think, is great. There, there's no concern with that piece of the slope. Um, my concern is with that further mo that that very corner of my foundation, and the how how that <clears throat> there isn't much level land before that slope starts um, back down. And honestly, when I when I moved in in 2016, there used to be a fence that ran along before that before that original slope was there. And when I moved in, the soil was behind the, 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 the supports for the fence. And just in the six years that I'd been there, the soil had eroded to the front of, like to the, to the point you could push the fence over. Mm -hmm. So the erosion was enough that it, it's, it, it needed to have something done to it because it was creeping towards the foundation. Um, my concern right now is it's not as drastic as that, but my concern is there is still quite a slope on that further, furthest most corner. What is that going to look like for me in six years, in ten years from now, and and as I'm, you know, getting, I don't want to have to do this again. <laughs> I want to be able to like stabilize that soil, know that the erosion is in, you know, is in control, and that that foundation won't be a problem. Um, so so you, you've got an engineering firm that's determined that that slope is adequate. Um, and it doesn't sound like there's evidence of erosion yet? It was correct. It was done last June, so there's not enough time to pass now at the, this point. Now, this area was supposed to have been vegetated temporarily with grass and then um, planted with uh, native shrubs correct um, part of it part of that grassed area is now covered with mulch the this the sloped area has been covered with mulch in, in that in that area since um, that will not help erosion no no it won't and and, and I can do grass there um, but, but I guess my concern is that it's it's still a steep a steep slope, I, and I don't I don't know that even from myself as a homeowner expected what that would look like when I agreed to the plan. Mm -hmm. I mean, and part of the reason for planting the shrubs is to stabilize the the slope. Um, the the roots will get deeper and and hold the, the soil there. Agreed. Yep. Yep. Um, is there a reason that you didn't plant shrubs there? It, it's it's not complete yet. There, there's more work to be done. Did the city call the plan complete? No. They shouldn't because it's not. I don't think we, we don't do, ins we haven't done like a final inspection. So no, I wouldn't say necessary. If there's still action items, then there's still items. I would say. Okay. Right. So the plan, it, it, it isn't complete yet. I, I know, like, the plan had um, some shrubs that needed to be planted, and, and I understand that. Um, but that's not in your plan here. And in fact, you've got ornamental plants um, going in there instead. I didn't realize I needed to depict where all of the um, other plants needed to be planted. They're not even called out here. 
there are no native shrubs or, um, or ground cover. Um, I guess I, I'm not. My, inclina my inclination would be not to second guess the, um, the engineering plan, um, but to put it in, into place um, that was, as it was intended and, and assume that things are, are going to be <laughs> sound. Um, There are several items on, on here that really don't come into our purview, like the uh, maintenance of, of the foundation and, and the driveway, um, putting in flower beds in front of the house. Um, that may or may not be within the buffer, but as far as I'm concerned, um, you know, maintaining your house is, is a, a different story. If there are flower beds there already, um, that would be grandfathered anyway. Um, but it's it's the work in the in the wetland buffer uh, and what was a wetland uh, prior to the plan that concerns me. So, so I'm I'm glad you mentioned that. Um, you kind of lead it into the, all of the other items that I put on there. My <coughs> property is a hundred by a hundred feet. So, you know, I, I have tried to depict this or decipher this, as you can tell with all my stickies on what my rules are being in this buffer zone. So there definitely is a 50 foot and a hundred foot and everything says that, you know, it appears that any time I want to put a shovel to ground, I need approval and I need to come here so that that's kind of um, I want to say it, it kind of makes it hard for me to to just maintain my property and and do what I feel like I need to do so I'm kind of glad that you mentioned that because I do want to talk about the things that I want to do and make sure that I'm understanding what my abilities are um, just to to speak to the to go back to the walls I think you know the the walls that I want to put in are in that zero to 50 feet um, the plants that were there all the plants that I'm asking for were all on the property and in that that area prior to excavation I moved them they, <clears throat> they weren't in the wetland they the, they were in there the, were no azaleas or um, they they were um, they were within the in the buffer they were in the buffer yeah. yeah yeah the azaleas used to run right along the fence closer to the front of my house I'm m moving those to it, it, the end of the Flynn and Westman the end of the property used to have that nicer look right the fence there and we had I had some there were some shrubs there and I'd like to try to recreate that look I'm right now it's kind of open and well let me frame this um the, the plan was approved last time um with the focus as um you know limiting um harm to the to the wetland right. um not not for the purposes of expanding the usable area of of the yard or, or beautifying it fair um, so there is you know there is grass there now um, it most you know much of it should be planted with more than just grass but it's definitely not there for the purpose uh, you know it's not intended for you know I I understand casual it is entertainment it's just that those those existed there prior to so I it's it's not like they weren't there and I'm trying to add I, I literally literally they are like nursery across the street right now with the 
original I originally expected that I could bring them back to the property um, they were there before they did not impact the wetlands before I didn't expect that there would be an issue to bring them back into that buffer zone um, the the burning bush can't come back definitely that's um, an invasive plant and that's prohibited by a state to, to move that um, I'm not sure about the the others um, why don't I open it up to the to the Commission for mm -hmm. comment So I just have a few questions since I wasn't here before and just trying to piece this together. Um, so you had an erosion issue that was a concern. You had an engineer come in, look at the property, and then came here for approval for, to go forward. So um, in that time since then, since the engineer gave you that report and everything, you've become more concerned about the impact on your house or losing more of your property through erosion so so the work so the work has been the excavation piece has been done mm -hmm. according to the plan yep um when i see what it is and i i walk that space and again it, it's the furthermost corner of my foundation that i'm worried about mm -hmm. <clears throat> There's, there is not that much level space before it slopes. Um, you know, I, I have the plan with me, um, and it's showing here. It, w it was to go to, like, from 218 down to 212. Mm -hmm. I interpreted that to maybe be a six foot over a certain amount, so it would be a more gradual, more gradual mm -hmm. slope. That's not what it, it is. Why it's different, I, I, I can't speak to that. There, there's been no soil change in that area, actually. All of the work that was done was, was on the, you know, the upper part where we, where we did the, the, the pipe and such. So that is now, yes, my concern <clears throat> is that, that, the, that there could be potential for erosion to start to happen in that that furthermost corner of my house where where was the original issue you know I, so I mean I understand that concern I'm just trying to so so if an engineer approved all of this I mean have they come back since then you know and looked at what I can, your concern is I can is? work with them I, you know I could reach back out to Norway Plains I'll, I'll just be quite honest is that you know this this work has far exceeded my budget mm -hmm. for what I can do. Sure. So at this point right now, it isn't feasible for me mm -hmm. to go back to Norway Plains and, and initiate that kind of cost. So, you know, I'm, without redoing the plan, I was looking for a way that I could shore that up myself. Um, I've been doing the work myself <clears throat> just to, sure. to prove how I'm trying to save the money to do it. I mean, I guess what I'm what I'm trying to figure out is if there if there is a problem or there's just a perception of a problem, it right? Could yeah. Um, I, I am not an expert by any means, you know, and I'm not trying to to reflect that I am. No, it's yeah. just as my home and as I'm trying to protect that piece of it, mm -hmm. that does not feel like I've gained the the confidence that I had in trying to stabilize it sure and, and that's what I feel like I need yeah right um, I understand that it's wetlands and I understand that it's in the buffer zone I'm not looking to do anything you know consistently I, I want to be able to stabilize it maintain it so that it stays safe um, I, I want it about uh, increasing the um, the distance from the house well the, the flat distance it's six feet to how many feet so I ten feet is what I I thought I would get and so I want to 
bill you know I, I'm doing that tiered because I don't want to do a six foot tall wall there right that's not safe either doing it tiered and have that last wall the, the top wall be 12 feet so the front face of it would be 12 feet from the foundation that'll give me two feet to be able to fill with gravel you know and stabilize it and then that nice 10 foot level surface from that from that corner and you would do that without an engineer I no, no. I mean that that's kind of what I'm getting at too is I I mean I would there's a there's a potential that that what you do may cause problems as well right by by going out um tearing that you know who knows if there's, it could get undercut I mean and and these aren't these aren't areas that I'm completely familiar with either but if I was in your situation I I understand you know wanting to respond and and you know, protect that corner of your house, but I'd also be really worried about what I would do if that would, you know, if it would really be beneficial or not without fully understanding. And you probably have a, a, a solid understanding of all this, but, you know, without really having somebody else look at it, because it was, there was an engineer there that came up with a plan and, you know, you're not comfortable with the results of that, right? But you don't know that it actually is a risk to your house, though. Right? Fair. Fair. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So I'm going to preface what I say here by saying that I'm, I'm very conflicted on this because I'm a member of the Conservation Commission, and I'm also very sympathetic to where you are. I own a house on a very small property, and it's a weird one, too, mine due to age more than the slope of the land. So I absolutely know where you're coming from of every inch of soil you have being precious and also the eye-popping bills that can show up sometimes when you have somebody working on your place mine's 130 years old i get it um also i very i'm very acquainted with the feeling of knowing just enough to be dangerous and trying to get something fixed um that said um kind of echoing something that kevin said here you had an engineer come out, which I'm assuming was not at all cheap for you to draw this up. And what they've recommended is this slope of land with plantings on it. And their professional opinion is that this should stabilize your property. I've tried to put in dry laid stone walls in the past, and you can create erosion problems with them because they channel water. So as a conservation commission member, I'd be disinclined to overrule professional engineers' opinion on what should be done to control erosion. As somebody who's been in a similar position with their property in the past and gotten themselves into trouble trying to fix something, I'd encourage you to go with a professional engineer's opinion here and get the plantings in and stabilize it. Um, yeah. it's, it's scary, but sometimes you've got to trust the pros. Uh, one th one thing that we hadn't mentioned was or talked much about was the addition of the shed. Correct. Yep. Um, <clears throat> so that's item A on your list. Correct. It's a um, ten by twelve shed. Um, along the Westman um, side of the property, kind of at the end of my house, but in the front. Um, it's the only feasible location because of my property where I can put additional storage. Um, the shed is there. I went to Summersworth. I, I, had, I received a permit. It's on a you know, gravel base. Um, that and it was a delivered shed, uh, not something that I built. So it, it, at this point, right now, this this shed exists in that in that space. Um, 
so i guess i'm looking for you to approve the fact that or support the um, permit that i received to be able to put that that shed there kind of a question for staff on that dana if she has a permit for this got it installed as the permit specified is this something that we'd even have purview over yes because it's in the wetland buffer it was um missed in the review of it um i don't think her wet um our gis doesn't pull her wetland area um so if the building inspector is going based off of that it wouldn't have um indicated that the was close to that so i think that is how it potentially got overlooked gotcha. so it is a bit of an after the fact for that part okay um it's it's at the um the upper end of of the work that was done um there's not a whole lot of slope there um it's it's not too close to the wetland um although it is in the buffer we're talking about a one foot tall wall of rock or timber um what what width are you thinking of i just want to put it so there's a gravel base on it right now and one side it's not a drastic slope but there the gravel is exposed and i would just like to place something I, i'm proposing rocks or if i can't get rocks timbers just to be able to try to um keep that keep that gravel there in that shape that it is so that it doesn't start to leak out from under the shed so what's the width of the gravel from the shed um a foot around so it the, the whole pad is two feet by two feet larger than the shed it's a 12 by 14 base And I wouldn't go all the way around it. it. It's just the right side and about halfway in the back and it will melt into, into the, the land that's there. Personally, I'm less concerned about that than um, the uh, terracing and, uh, and the planting. I think um, I don't know that that size shed um, won't channel a lot of rain, um, and you've already got the the gravel base. Um, yeah, I, I can't see what harm putting a, a stone or or timber uh, wall would, would do. We had a similar case, I think, a month or two before you were here before uh, near Lily Pond where it was a homeowner trying to put in a very similar 10 by 10 delivered shed and the stipulations we put on it were no poured concrete footings and a gravel dirt patch around it. It sounds like we've already got that here, mm -hmm. so. Um, what about this um, item B, the access strip along the garage? That's yeah. on the other side of the house from the west. Yeah, uh, so this is the struggle. Everything else, depending on where, <laughs> where I have the ability to, to do work. Mm -hmm. It's it's outside of the 50, but it's in the 100, because again, right. my whole property, and in fact, if you go by the 100, it, it actually leaks into my neighbor and my, my side and back neighbor, mm -hmm. that 100. Um, so it's a matter of how, what is my, what are my rights? What can I do in that? in that space so yeah. there is there are things that i need to do the shed was built no the garage was built pretty much right on the property line not you know way before i bought it there was an you know an exception to be able to do it and i i have to step onto my neighbor's property right now the way that it is the way that it was done on that side i have to be on my neighbor's property to to get to that to the get to the back of the house on that side somebody built somebody you know planted um, a bunch of daylilies in there and yes it's beautiful but it it's a mess it's just a bunch of daylilies that are just 
need if you need day lilies please contact me um, so I would like to clear that out gravel it and and be able to have a, a path on the side of my garage and that's an area C and B on this right map. Um, yeah I, I don't see any impact that that would have on the wetland since the house is in between it <laughs> um, there's no wetland behind your house uh, on that side, right? Not that I'm aware of, no. But, well, there's another a neighbor there, right? South of, of you? There is a Nate. On Flynn? Yeah, yeah. So I have a neighbor behind me and right. a neighbor next to me on that, that, in that area, yeah. So I, I can't see any harm that that would do. Unless anybody else has any opinions. No. Could I ask the question, when was your house built? 2002. Really? And they... It, it, in my opinion, it shouldn't have been built there. Exactly. But then again, a lot of the houses there shouldn't have been built there. Right. No, I know. I'm just... So, a mean, lot of sump pumps. But it, it puts the homeowner in kind of an awkward yeah. situation. Yeah, and I, I quite honestly, when I bought the property, I, there was there was originally a 30-foot wide easement on that side of Flynn, which was a no-touch easement assigned to Francor, which is where the builder. That should have never, liter, it literally was still in his name until I removed it last last summer. Um, it should have been assigned over to Summersworth. It was just um, some things left un, undone, I think. Well, if we take this um, item by item, I, I think we can all agree that the, the proposal for the shed is okay. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, the strip along the garage. Yep. Erosion control along the driveway. Mm -hmm. um, maintenance and rehab of the flower beds. Yep. New flower bed. Yep. So in that nook, so if you, um, I tried to show it, it, it's E on, on the house plan, on that plan, the second plan. Mm -hmm. um, that one might be the closest to the, the um, it, it, I believe it might be even in that 50 foot. Right now, um, there's nothing there. I would like to extend D the flower bed that's in the front of my house to wrap around that side of my house and then take some of the plants that I'll be dividing and thinning out from the other beds and place them in there I hesitate to um, recommend that um, particularly with the erosion concerns disturbing that soil and you know, putting something else there other than what's there now. That's kind of why I want to put it there because that soil has always been very tender. Mm -hmm. um, just o over the years, it's always been, because it's a very dark area, it gets to be mossy mm -hmm. and it, it never freezes. It, it, it's always very easy to strip the top layer off. So part of why I want to is I want to be able to put plants to actually try to keep that soil there. So you could put the ground cover there and the shrubs. If you put a garden there, you might have mulch in between the plants. Is that what you're envisioning? Or? Um, just because that's, yeah. I, the plants that I was looking to do in there, um, it would have been, you know, something like the hostas, the creeping flocks. It would have been something. I also have unimus. I think that's how you say it. That I thought I could put in there. It, that's the burning bush. That, that's the oh, uh, invasive. Oh, then I put that wrong. That's not. That's not what I intended. I apologize. It probably is. People are unfamiliar with it. It's. It's the, a ground cover, is what I'm. I was talking about. Do the leaves turn red in the fall? No, oh. they're green and white variegated green and yellow variegated okay that's not hosta no it, the, this is a it, it creeps all right we don't want that in a wetland <laughs> well yeah 
it just it makes a great ground ground cover just because it sure. does yeah. and it attaches so right or it could choke out natives uh, true it could um any comments on that I, so <clears throat> i mean one thing that comes to mind is you know that e that section e would be integrated in with whatever ends up happening after you talk to the, the engineer or, or however that moves forward, right? I mean, it's along the same section, same side of the house, or am I misreading? It is the same side of the house. It, it, it doesn't have a slope, though. It, it's in the front where that slope is a lot less. It, it's more gradual where that slope is. Yep. I don't have a concern from an erosion, that type of erosion perspective, like I am in the back. This was more so that I just know that this is a soft area, mm -hmm. and I wanted to be able to, to do something there to to plant. There's, there's nothing there right now. Mm -hmm. I, I try to grow grass there. It just it doesn't take there for some reason. And I just wanted to be able to plant, fill it in, plant it with something to, to try to, to help with that. If it's mossy, uh, you could. There's nothing wrong with trimming trees and letting some light in there. Well, we'll Cutting see what happens another... next summer, right? <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry, Kevin. Did was there more that you? No, I mean, I was just thinking of you know, it, you. You don't know exactly what's going to happen just behind that area is all. And so I, I was just thinking of integrating it, but you may not be, you know, it sounds like you 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 envision these as no matter what changes occur uh, towards the culvert or not culvert, but the drainage that this would stay distinct and not be affected by anything yeah, there. Yeah, it's, so. and it, it, I mean, I can pull out. I brought the pl the original plan, and this this new this new bed. My house has an add an addition on it, like it, a bump out. Mm -hmm. This this new bed that I'm talking about would that that bump out sets back, right? Yep. Um, it's this corner of that bump out. Yeah. Historically, it hasn't had a lot of light you know with this work that could change because there was a lot of tree cover before mm -hmm. um i just well, i think that's that, what i was getting at yeah that that i mean that soil could firm up and we could be fine i just know that it's a soft it's soft area and i'm not concerned that it's going to erode into it, it's not it's not sloped that way the part that i'm worried about is that back corner of right. my house where we was not part of the plan. We didn't, there wasn't any filling in or any change made. It, it's what it was before, basically. Yeah, so I, just to be clear, I don't really have, I, I have no serious concerns about E. I was just trying to yeah. think ahead one step that, and, and you just sort of hit on that, that, well, if the light changes or if, if you get more um, air movement through there or whatever, then that changes the vegetation, um, ha that changes the habitat for the vegetation. So you could put a lot of effort into establishing something in that new garden and then those changes that may or may not occur um, where you try to firm up your support for your the back part of your house um, it may make some of that possible. but so anyways that's just thinking ahead you know I don't you know for me if if there's not invasives and some of the things that Scott mentioned with um, uh, ground cover and all I, I there's nothing there that really concerns me so much uh, gravel strip maintenance um To help you out, you know, when you were, you know, you're worried that you have to come before us for anything that you need to do in, in the yard. Anything that's there already that you need to maintain, just maintain it. Um, so if if you need to put crushed rock in to, you know, to replace crushed rock that's you know, moved away, you know, through erosion or whatever, that's fine. Um, if there was rock there already, then you know, 
put the you know put the rock back there. You can remove the, the weeds from there because that's it was functioning as you know as crushed rock before. Um, it's not like it was wetland that you're disturbing. Same thing with the deck repair. Um, it, yeah, yeah, it's within the the buffer, but um, it was you know it's grandfathered. Um, it was already there, and um, if it needs to be repaired, you can just repair it. You know, adding to you know the the area of the crushed rock would be another story. For example, um, repairing your steps. Don't need to ask about that. It it it's you know again it feel I I feel almost ridiculous that I brought so many things, but all of these touch the soil, and mm -hmm. and as I'm trying to you know it, it the ordinance it was not clear in how my situation fit and any time and it just felt like any time I was touching the soil digging a hole adjusting the soil in the you know even in the 50 to 100 that I needed to get I needed to come here um, that that's frustrating in a way which is why this is this is such a long list because this is my you know list of everything that I I need I know I need to do you know, I've been watching it happen, and I honestly hope I don't have to come here every year for everything that I want to do. Yeah, I guess to, to re rephrase it, any any area of of the yard that was already in that state before you moved in, feel free to do whatever work you need to do. And I mean, you know, <laughs> don't don't put PCBs in there. <laughs> Don't you know? Don't go crazy, but um, that's all grandfathered. Okay. And I think I can pretty confidently speak for all of us that we would way rather have you be cautious and check on stuff than just pull the backhoe up and start <laughs> digging. Um, is that's happened? Um, so yeah. Thank you. <clears throat> so every three years, when I need to have my um, tank pumped. We're going to be okay that I'm going to dig a big hole in my backyard. <laughs> yeah. And I'm not going to have to come here to get approval, please. You, no. you may have a, a strange issue with your tanks back there, from what I hear. The yeah, I do. Shared septic tanks or no, something? No, I have. No, I, I'm on city water and sewer, but I have a, a black tank in my backyard that I have to have pumped every three years. And I have a. Uh, water. I have a liquids pump there as well, which happened to fail this summer. So I apologize. It, there has been a hole in the back because I, my pump was dead, so I was not pumping. Um, yeah. So there's a very, very interesting, yeah. non doc, not documented plan. I'll just make you aware because I tried to find it and couldn't find it so um, I guess the only things that we were concerned with were uh, the um, you know disturbing the the slope um, planting um, non-natives in the uh, in the buffer and you know where the work was done and um, did I miss anything I think we we're okay with that right mm -hmm. yeah yeah Yes. Yep. Uh, that's being requested as part of the CUP, right? Yes. So the items for your recommendation for planning board would be um, enhanced regarding the enhanced erosion control, which was the tiering of the property, the returning of original shrubs and plants to property as depicted on the 
plan that oversets the Norway plan's plane. Um, shed. Access strip along the garage. Erosion control along the driveway. Maintenance and rehab of existing flower beds. Establishment of a new flower bed. And gravel. And then you said the gravel strip maintenance, foundation repair, deck repair, front steps replace and repair would fall under in your considerations the grandfathering of it because they're existing and not expanding. Mm-hmm. Do your thing. <laughs> <laughs> I get to be the motion guy in this one. Yeah. Um, if you want to make two, if there are items that you recommend, or maybe even three determinations, like one that says these items we feel are um, exempt because they're grandfathered items, not enlarging, um, a motion that regards anything that you recommend approval, and a motion that if there's any items that you do not recommend approval. I think that having three motions would make things clearer for staff to bring to the planning board and for um, I th- the applicant as well. Okay. And minutes. Yeah, I think that makes sense. Let me grab the list and walk through these real quick. Um, so, the enhancements maintenance list. Let's see which one of these is the so tearing. Tear yeah. Sand. So on this back. Oh, previous page. Okay. Sorry, I, no, no, it, in the Word document, so in that, so I have amendment to the CUP, it's two bullet items, it's the enhanced erosion c- control and then the return original shrubs. Okay. That was the, that, those were the first two items. And then the next page, and then the next, I just classified them as all like enhancements and maintenance because they were outside, you know, they weren't part of that original plan. Okay, I'm gonna try to tackle this in reverse order. Um, <laughs> okay, um, so I make a motion that the Conservation Commission recommend to the Planning Board that items B through I, as listed on the applicant's enhancements maintenance plan, are not relevant to ours or the planning board's purview as they involve existing conditions on the property. That we recommend approval of an after the fact CUP for item A, the storage shed. That the conditions that we would have requested had this been requested prior to installation, the lack of a permanent foundation and inclusion of a gravel drip edge surrounding the shed have been met by the applicant already. Sorry, I gotta write this down at the same time I'm doing it. And that we recommend the amendments for enhanced erosion control and return of original shrubs and plants not be approved and that the installation as recommended by Norway plants and approved prior be completed. Um, At the the last um, CUP, one of the conditions that that we required, in addition to the Norway Plains plan, was um, the the planting of the uh, the native shrubs and ground cover. And that be maintained. Sorry, I thought that was on the Norway Plains. So no. been done on the uh, terracing to have that restored to the Norway Plains 
I right. kind of assume that would be included in the uh, work as recommended in the Norway Plains plan to be completed. So basically that that okay. plan hold. Is that what you're looking for for? I have a question. Yeah, I think so. Um, question for clarification yeah. um, for the applicant too. I think if, so the returning of the shrubs and things, so that concern was because of the placement of it, of the shrubs, um, that because they were existing stuff on the property, but they were removed. And so the concern, right, and why you would not recommend approval for them is in the locations provided. So, like, if she wanted to put them, because as she's mentioned, the whole property is within the buffer. If she was to put them not in the locations depicted, say, on the far, like, say, on the far side of the property or on the rear of her structure or something like that, is that, ex like, is there any issue or concern of her putting them back on her property by the Conservation Commission or need further approval if it's just not in that particular areas that are depicted? For purposes of the motion, the only chunk of land that I'm concerned with with that is the area that was impacted by the Norway Plains plan. A, E, A and E areas, right? Uh, oh, as shown on, like, so she showed the shrubs and things like that to be along the property line here and in that terraced area, yeah. which is under that area that was impacted under the Norway Plains app. We'll, we'll call it the Norway Plains application. Yeah. So if she wanted to take, get her plants back um, from her neighbor's house, um, it's really <laughs> is, Sorry. does she need further approvals from the commission if she's to put them like somewhere else, like just like in line with the house or over or something, basically, or Not she can opinion. plant them without. Apart from an advisory that if that Euonymus is burning bush. As long as it's not an invasive plants, obviously we don't want to transfer invasive plants. Yeah, so I, 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 I don't have a burning bush. That's okay. that's not what I. I made a mistake there. There's like three different species of you. It's, it's are... not a bush at all. Oh, it okay. literally is a ground cover. <clears throat> yeah. Like, there's... and it, it's, it, it was there before I actually took it out and it's in pots. Yeah, gotcha. Yeah. There's like three or four species of euonymus that are used commonly in the landscaping trade and burning bush is one of them. The other three are not. Yeah. That, deal, that's, that stuff I do not have a burning bush. Yeah. I okay. do not. Okay. So, but she, yes. she could bring her plants back basically as long as it's on like so in line that, or no, over no. is the and she doesn't need to come back here for approval for that so could i plant them on plant some of them on around the shed which is part of the request yeah. with her shed well i wouldn't have a problem doing it within that one foot you know where the gravel is but um it may or may not do well there but no, outside of that, I, I wouldn't recommend it. Um, I wouldn't. Um, it's. I think it's too, too risky there. Um, Is that just on the wetland side of that shed, or would that be on the? We'll call it the upland side of the shed, just for clarification, so that Tammy doesn't have to. Uh, and and maybe you can. Help yeah, me. on and the wetland side of the shed. Yeah. So if she plants on the call it the upland side of it so away from the wetlands that would be acceptable locations around the shed yeah, between unless it was within the drip edge right so so anything basically in the front yard <laughs> the front yard would be fine uh, as long as it's not um, to the um, 
to the wetland side of the shed. Okay. Does everyone agree on that? Yes. I'll second. Can I? One of three motions, right? Is that what you asked for? Jeremy kind of broke it up. He had made it into one really large one. He indicated that um, items under enhancements maintenance for Westman B through I are not under the purview of the commission. They're existing conditions of the property, um, and therefore she can do the work and does not need a conditional use permit for those actions. Item A is a recommendation for approval um, with the um, conditions that would have been attached and have been installed are the permanent, no permanent foundation and a drip edge be installed and that the commission does not recommend the, um, does not recommend approval of the in amendment items which are returning the original shrubs and plants to the property within the area that was um, under modifications under CUP 8 2022, um, but, are, but are okay with the, them coming back to the property in other locations um, and does not recommend the approval of the enhanced erosion control tiering slope of the backyard. Does that structurally work for you? Yes, I am good because it's still pinpointing each thing. Okay. Sounds good. Okay, so we had a motion. Yep. Who, whose motion was second. I moved. moved. His motion, motion, I seconded. All right. We've got a Jeremy and a Jeremy. Any more uh, discussion? All, Do those, we, all those in, yes, go ahead. Do Sorry. we just pull this back then and resubmit based on that? Do I just you withdraw this and resubmit for the shed then? what um you don't have to resubmit for the shed um if there's items i think that if you wanted to withdraw i think we could do that well i just if and then move forward the to amendments get amendments aren't recommended we know planning board's not gonna going to approve them they're not going to overturn so so it, it seems speaking as a, a planning board member too probably the cleanest way you could do this so there would be just pull everything except the shed, submit that for an afternoon. Well, that's what I'm just wondering. I mean, this was quite intense. Yeah, do we want to put sorry. planning board through that? Yeah, so we could do that um, staff-wise. We could communicate with you um, based off of your what you're receiving for a recommendation from the Conservation Commission. If you are changing, altering your plans to remove those items that they're not recommending anyways, I don't think that would require you to come back to this board. If you're proposing to only move forward with the um, item that they did recommend approval, we can just, will reduce your application to when it goes to planning board to just reflect the items that you do want to do. Okay. So how many, how many CUPs are we talking about? Just one. Um, for the after the fact for the shed. Uh, well, there, there's also the disturbance to the, um, the wetland buffer. Well, that's going to be returned to the and to the state that Norway Plains' this plan had in the first place, there's nothing being changed. Right, but it's that's why it's an after the fact CUP, right? Because the work has been done. Oh, that's why because there's some of the retaining wall, so you feel that that should still remain and go before the board for action on him. Okay. okay. Doug, you, you look puzzled. The point where I'm kind of pitching on this is that not to drag this longer but um the original CUP hasn't been closed out that work hasn't it, been, it it isn't closed out. yeah that hasn't been had the final approval on it so if there's an alteration <clears throat> to that that's returned to the state of the original CUP that CUP gets closed legally nothing happened here well that that brings up a uh, concern that I had uh, actually when I had checked in on, on the, um, the status of the plantings, um, the response that I got was that the commission had not um, defined a deadline for the plantings. Um, and so that remains open-ended uh, unless we put a deadline on it. Um, 
Is there there, there's more there than than just the plantings to finalize that original permit, though. I'm still working to try to get my mortgage company to agree to the new easement that that is needed. So the that permit is not complete yet. It and and the plantings wouldn't complete it until I can get that other piece resolved. So it's a year on now. Um, is there a limitation? Um, can she's act? She's started active and substantial work there. So it's currently actively being. There's no expiration on it indicated in the ordinance that your that a conditional use permit um, expires, and then like site plan regulations indicate about like active and substantial development. Um, so she has started the work, so and then it doesn't. Could be open for ten years, as long as there's work. The uh, depending on the extent of the project and theoretic theoretically, there's a possibility for that. And I would say that we should nail it down, time wise. The only thing I'd be cautious <laughs> on with that is if we have the authority to do that legally, because we're becoming a randing city. Well, would we? I didn't fully catch what you said, Jeremy. I apologize. If we put a time cap on a CUP or recommended that the planning board put a time cap on a CUP, mm -hmm. would there be authority to do that since it would override city RSA? I don't know the full extent to the answer and would defer to talking to Director Mears in regards to that. You know, my concern is that this could go undone. I feel like it too. Don't worry. Well, it could go, <laughs> go undone forever. <clears throat> you know, and then the property is sold even, and the new owner may not do it. It's just. Um, I'm, I'm kind of at a Your loss. current motion doesn't indicate that she needs to complete anything within a certain time frame at all either. So right now that your recommendation is right. not indicating, if we put the recommendation forward as it is stated in the motion right now, that wouldn't alleviate your concern at this point. Right, which is why we're talking about it before okay. we voted. Okay. <laughs> I, I'm going to raise a concern for that in, in that, depending on what kind of timeline you want to put on it. Mm -hmm. There is, again, the easement over to Summersworth, and there's a mortgage company component <clears throat> to that that is not favorable right now. So just putting that yeah, I, as an awareness. I agree with your concern, Scott, but there's so many externalities here that we have zero control over, not least of which is can we even legally do this? Mm. Um, and... It's a thing where personal advice, we probably want to get those plantings in to stabilize that, this ground. Um, but the CUP can't close until the mortgage company is satisfied, the easement gets handed over to the city. What I wouldn't want to have happen is for us to put that on that kind of a restriction on there when there's these externalities that are outside of the direct control of anybody on this board or the applicant and then force them to come back and continually renew CUPs. It just it creates a tail that should theoretically be covered by the active and substantial work clause of the CUP. Can we get uh, to the um, legal counsel recommendation on that? I can ask Director Mears okay. about that. About if, like, when work of a CUP has to be completed, and whether. If the commission has the authority to um, stipulate any any deadlines, I mean, we're not um, we're not approving anything. We would just be recommending it. But yeah, I can confer with her regarding that. Okay. Thanks. All right. 
that aside, um, is there any other discussion on the motions on the table? All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Okay, the motion passes. Thank you. Thank you very much. You guys have a great night. Thank you, you too. Yeah, I, I really want to get that resolved because we do a lot of work on CUPs and um, I'm going to be on my soapbox here. It's meaningless if there's no finality to them. Okay. Um, next on the agenda then would be the video. Um, so that's uh, item three, introduction to land use and natural resources plan chapter. Autumn Scott, Stratford Regional Planning Commission. Uh, who is not here, but um, SRPC has provided a video um, introducing the project. I will move on away. <laughs> Always be blinded, Scott, if you want. So like Scott said, this is um, Stratford Regional Planning It in autumn. I, I haven't watched the video, so um, she will give an introduction to this project and some next steps. Peter might be a little sleepy now and sitting here. One would think it would have been a little more ready to go since it's had plenty of time to load. My name is Autumn Scott. I work for the Stratford Regional Planning Commission as a regional planner. Thank you all for accommodating my attendance tonight. The weather was looking quite scary yesterday, and I really wasn't wanting to drive north back home in that tonight, so thank you. Um, today, I'm going to be going over with you the items outlined in the memo that I sent last week. So we'll just take a look at the project timeline for updating your land use and natural resource master plan chapter and look at the project tasks um, throughout the next couple of months. And then we'll go over some next steps and the plan for your February meeting where we'll really start digging into things. All right. So as I said, the overall project is to update the city's 2010 master plan, the land use and natural resources chapter specifically and it seeks to integrate information contained in other city plans such as your hazard mitigation plan, the 2016 NRI and co-occurrence mapping project, and different reports from the Mayor's Commission for Preserved Summersworth, which I recently received. Um, so over the next month or so, we'll continue to review documents such as those and others like the Coastal Conservation Plan, uh, the Coastal Watershed Conservation Plan, um, and the recently released uh, climate reports from the IPCC and make sure that we have a solid foundation of what's going on not only in Summersworth but on a regional and uh, global scale to make sure that this is a comprehensive update. Um, so if you'd like, you can refer back to the memo. There is a timeline chart in there, as well as um, a task by task description that aligns with the timeline image. Um, so as you can see in there, there's a description of each task and what we'll be delivering along with those tasks. 
So right now we're finishing up task one, doing all of that background research, um, gathering any additional documentation from the planning department that we may need, such as uh, parcel data and other easement information from your recent um, conservation efforts and things of that nature to incorporate that into our review. Um, we will also continue to look at your existing maps and make sure we're pulling maps from the other natural resource related documents in the city so that we can update the data on those and build out a comprehensive map set, map set for this chapter to present to you all um, at the next meeting or two for your comments. So we also want to make sure that we're involving the wider community as much as possible in this project. Um, so we have several workshops planned over the next several months, as well as a survey. And some of these workshops, it, it will depend, for example, the next one um, will really just be directed uh, towards the Conservation Commission. Of course, the public is always welcome to attend, um, but for this workshop specifically, we'll be seeking some more informed um, participation on the nuances of what goes on uh, it, and land use management in Summersworth. So the workshop next month that we're planning um, will be a scenario planning visioning exercise so that we can solidify some goals for the chapter. So we'll all come together and plan for different potential futures in Summersworth and what those might look like in terms of managing your natural resources um, and how best to choose which of the potential futures to plan for. We also have planned evaluation surveys throughout the workshop series. Um, this will help not only SRPC design better engagement activities, but um, it will give us a better idea of how the public wants to be engaged by their land use volunteer boards and departments and also what are good ways to reach out to them and promote such activities and events to them so that you receive uh, better buy-in and higher participation rates. You'll also notice that throughout the task outline, it mentions an advisory group. Uh, where you see this, you can just insert Conservation Commission as discussed with city staff. You as Conservation Commission members hold a wealth of knowledge and are really best suited to advise us in this process. Throughout task three in your outline, you'll see that we are drafting the plan. So we have planned at least two drafts outside of the final so that you'll have plenty of time for comprehensive reviews of those. And of course, um, as we're doing our background research, we'll be meeting with you and in, in developing maps and requesting comments and review on those as well, um, because we do want this to be guided by you all. First and foremost. So once we've completed some of the outreach and gotten a solid foundation reviewing our documents and conducting research and updating the maps, we'll develop our first draft um, and we will solicit reviews from you all and revise as appropriate um, and then repeat uh, until we have the final draft. Once we have completed the draft, we'll move forward um, and support the city with a um, pu sorry, public hearing and adoption process. Um, and once that's over, We'll hold our last workshop with you all and promote it to the public so that we can solicit some 
buy-in from the community and gather a team of people that will support the Conservation Commission in implementing the action items that result uh, at the end of this chapter. And also to help connect you to resources such as grant funding opportunities um, and other organizations in the area that may help kick off your implementation efforts. And again, as I said, we'll implement evaluation surveys at the end of these workshops to make sure we know how best to reach the public when we're advertising for a workshop like this, SRPC and Summersworth, um, and how best to engage folks in a way that's suitable and accessible to members of your community. So that's the first part of the memo, the scope and timeline. I'm sure it's uh, not something you're all unfamiliar with, as I'm sure you've probably gone through a master plan update here or there. So our next steps together with SRPC and Summersworth staff, um, Anna, Dana, Michelle, myself, and my colleague Lisa Murphy, We'll work together through January to gather a list of potential maps to be made um, and SRPC will make those maps in house and make sure to include um, updates to your NRI co-occurrence maps and again others that we find in our research um, to make the most comprehensive and pared down set uh, as it makes sense. And then We'll present those to you all for uh, review and comment, as with all documents that we will prepare. So in the next month or so, uh, ideally at your February meeting, we will plan this scenario um, visioning activity. And um, we'll ask that you provide the following or prepare in the following way uh, for that meeting. In the memo, I've included, included a list of potential map layers. So this is a list that we, uh, when SRPC is completing an NRI in a community, this is the list that we typically present um, as sort of a foundation foundation of what, what should be included in an NRI and considering we are updating yours. I just wanted to provide you all with this information um, so that if you feel there is anything missing, there's something you see that's interesting, or um, you know, there is a co-occurrence of layers that you'd like to see together, any of those kinds of things, um, if you could send that to me or to a member of your planning staff, those comments, um, before your next meeting that will help us to develop the map set like I mentioned um, in a way that addresses your needs. The next thing that I would like to ask from you all is if you could come prepared to the February meeting um, as I mentioned we're going to do that scenario visioning activity so it would be ideal if you could all come prepared to the meeting with an idea of what are the internal or external driving forces in Summersworth for land use change. In your time here in the community, what have you seen causing changes in the way that you manage land and natural resources in the community? So for example, this could be things like climate change. It could be that you have experienced an influx of residents. Um, you have a higher percentage of children in your population, so things are changing more towards the youth. So those kinds of factors, what have you seen occurring in Summersworth? And this will help you to participate more easily um, in those scenario visioning activities. So that is our plan for the February meeting is to do that activity um, and to have maps prepared for you all so that after that February meeting, you can dig in and, and really look at them um, and we can provide a revision of those before the next meeting in March. 
Um, so then in March, in March, we will discuss the maps uh, much more in depth after we've already turned around a round of revisions from you all. Um, and we'll have integrated the information or questions that we received tonight, as well as at the February meeting um, in designing those maps and, and planning for that meeting. And so that is the plan for March. So those are the next steps and a really quick overview. Um, again, I apologize that I couldn't come meet you all tonight in person. I'm very excited to uh, get working with you all, as is my coworker, Lisa Murphy. Um, I think this is going to be a really fun project for us, and we're excited to work with the Conservation Commission on this. So. Thanks again, and my email is ascott at strafford.org. If you'd like to reach out with me, reach out to me with any questions, comments, or concerns at any time. Uh, my email is always open to you. My coworker Lisa, her email is lmurphy at strafford.org, um, and you can get those from Dana as well, I'm sure. Um, again, always email us, that's totally fine. Um, and I am excited to meet you all next month for those of you that I have not met yet uh, in person. So thank you, thank you again for your accommodations and I look forward to seeing you soon. Okay, so there, there are no actions required of us tonight for that correct Just to prepare yourself for the next. Um, regarding preparation did, did you pass out copies of the mayor's commission on preserve summersworth plan? um yes so it may help to look at this um There are um, land use sections in here with um, types of uh, preparation and recommendations. Um, this this plan, the scope is much broader than land use, um, but it does call out like there's a wildlife corridor section, um, conservation land section, urban environment, uh, invasive species, surface and groundwater. I mean, you'll, you'll see all the sections. It's a really long document. Um, not too difficult to navigate, I hope. Um, Mr. Dodds has been helping um, provide feedback on that. So I, I, I think that probably this document will help inform this project um, and that the rest of this would fall under some other um, initiative. But um, this will also help with uh, the um, the bullet item from SRPC about accomplishments since the last um, Division 2020 plan, um, and then uh, to help hit the ground running with goals. So I encourage you to look at that before the February workshop. Anything to add? Not at this point, I think. And um, if you go to Stratford.org, if you forget the email addresses or whatever, they're all on there. Do this before. Mm -hmm. you Thank you. Okay. Um, back to conditional use permits. Um, item A, 
Michael Davis is seeking a conditional use permit for after the fact excavation and alterations within the, what, the repairing a wetland buffer on a property located at 25 Otis Road in the residential single family district assessors map 31 lot 49 CUP 03 2023. Uh, Mr. Davis reached out um, via phone yesterday to indicate that he would not be able to he had a family conflict um, and therefore could not be in attendance at tonight's meeting so he did request to be continued to February but he also requested that he did provide um, he was able to get to us today some information on some items of restoration what he would um, at this point be willing to consider that I indicated that I could bring to you all for you to provide and he asked for feedback regarding these items of what he's addressed at this point um, based off of what it is the Commission is looking for so he's looking for um, feedback on these items if these are to a point that the Commission feels comfortable for providing a recommendation on this things or what information the Commission needs from him and if it's information that he needs to give to an engineer to work with he's looking for clear directive on what he needs to tell that engineer so he's looking for feedback and guidance on for moving forward on this application and to be continued to the February meeting can I ask a question uh, what, what is the sequence of events here so you know we you you created you know a bulleted list that was that sent to him yes that was sent to him um it we didn't get it out to him in a long enough in advance where we felt that he could get sure. an engineer on team so we wanted to provide that for him to be able to come back to our understanding when we sent it to him obviously that he was going to be in attendance our goal was for him to be able to talk with the commission regarding those things and have him be able to digest that information be able to have a conversation with you all regarding those action items and then work on getting the plan as the commission was hoping for um yeah, so I mean, so, you know, this step one, step two, the missing step three. Um, he says he's not at this point ready to address step three. So that's why there's I know, nothing I, in there. I guess I guess what I'm getting at is, that, you know, the sequence here, if I don't know that we should address this because this isn't this isn't in response to the list that we provided. Yeah, and I would I would expand on that and say that the list that we provided was. Um, meager at best because it wasn't a uh, back and forth between the commission uh, or the applicant um, and that this sort of disjointed and unorthodox approach is not healthy for anyone especially given the friction that the city has encountered with the issue my suggestion would be if the applicant is unable to um, uh, attend through the through a meeting to talk through all the issues and to uh, provide uh, an engineer feedback uh, feedback from an engineering firm that the court has asked the conservation commission to um, to weigh in on this and, and uh, uh, you know recommend uh, approval of a, of a CUP we can't do that without what we've requested I would I would defer back to the court for what to do next because I I don't think that it's um, it's healthy for us to, to continue in this fashion I think it will only lead to frustration it does feel like it could be endless back and forth on on the very small details and and I mean you know, we had a maybe somewhere near six points I think <laughs> to talk about at the last meeting and, and we didn't get through one um, so I, I know that's what I've been struggling with too is you know this is taking a lot of time and focus um, which I don't mind doing but I can't see an end in some ways you know and, and this is this is just another kind of example of that that this is coming in pretty much much exactly what was stated by the applicant before 
and it didn't it didn't meet some of the requirements that we had then so um, I would just I, I would prefer to not address this and have that or that list at least to him that's to him now and have him you know start thinking through that because as Scott said there's there's details within each of those points too that have to be worked out I'd agree. In terms of kind of looking at the, the breakdown here and setting some context, this is a request coming from the court system due to previous interaction with the applicant. We have provided a list of bullet points here. I don't think we're necessarily looking for him to develop a full list of engineers' responses to those bullet points by the next session. However, I think it's reasonable to expect that we could work through those with the applicant in the next session, the complete list. And as a component of the response to that, have an expectation that an engineer would be consulted to address a remediation plan in the very near future. And ideally to have an engineer present while we talk about those points. Yeah, because none of us are engineers. We're neither is the applicant. We're all out of our areas of expertise. Having an expert advisor would be a good thing. So failing that, I would say we would fall back on the court. Um, we, we need to put this in a motion and vote on it, but mm. um, ultimately I don't. I think we've done what we can. Okay. And to, to go further would be unwise. Okay, so in summary, would you be looking for the applicant to provide what's been outlined in the bulleted list that was sent to him previously or be able to speak to it with an engineer I, I if he's that, not able to provide that then to defer to the back to the court i think a fair expectation would be that we could continue till the next meeting um <laughs> provided that uh, an engineer was present with him uh, or without him represent him uh, so that we could uh, discuss the finer points of of what's required um, and if that can't happen then it goes back to the court okay Any, um, any more discussion on that? Anyone care to put it into a motion? No, I can take that. Um, make a motion that the uh, conditional use permit requests were made by Michael Davis. CUP's number 03-2023 and 0P CUP number 07-2023 uh, be continued to the meeting of the Conservation Commission February 2024. That would be the 14th uh, with the Commission's request that the applicant uh, engage an engineer to be present at that session to discuss the full list of items requested. I'll second that motion. Um, and if not? But the expectations of the commission is that this will be returned to the court system for further action. Okay. Do you still second? Yep, I'm still second. Any more discussion? All those in favor? Aye. All opposed? Motion passes. Second just And that was on both CUPs. Yes, that's yeah. both. Figured we'd jump that one. Clarify the tree remo that's for the tree removal as well? That's for both, yes. 
Just clarifying that that one doesn't have the court attachment to it, right? Ah, oh, it not? The tree removal he has not done yet. That, that is a, it, yeah. that is an. So the expectation would be that. That's just continued to. Yeah, 03-2023 with the expectation that would be forwarded to the court if we're unable to resolve in February or make substantial progress in February and that 07-2023 is simply continued. All right, so let's go back and, and do a motion specific to CP07. Okay. So for 03-2023, the motion is that we continue to February 14th, 2023 or 24 with the expectation that the applicant uh, either attend with an engineer or send an engineer in his stead, failing that, that it would be forwarded to the court for further action. That's what we just voted on. For 07-2023, that it be continued to February 14, 2024. For the applicant to be in attendance? For the applicant to be in attendance or a representative to discuss these items. So if he's in attendance. So second on that one. Yeah, I'll second that one as well. Okay, all in favor? Is that the one that's the tree. To the cutting? Yeah, yes, that's the, the pine trees. I don't believe he's ever submitted any those trees are in relation. Uh, well, he pointed them out to us on the site visit. Um, I can. We can tell you approximately where they are, um, and that would be on the, um, the west side of the pond, um, toward Otis Road. It's that uh, trapezoid section there, approximately. Uh, just to the north of that trapezoid between the pond and Otis Road. Yes. Yeah. Very close to that property line, I think. Yep. Yes. Okay. Uh, did we finish the vote? We did not. And we've got a motion. We've got a second from you, Jeremy. You seconded the second one, right? Okay. Correct. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Okay. The motion passes. Caught up? Yep. New business, election of officers. We didn't do it last time because we didn't have a full panel. Um, but I know that Dale was interested in, in being uh, vice chair again. Um, I didn't hear from Sean what his preferences were, but should we continue again? Your rules are, it came up when my review of your rules of procedure. Um, it says you're supposed to do it in January. I feel like we did it late last year. We probably did. Um, it just, I mean, if you guys are, can waive your rules of procedure and continue it, it's fine. It's just. I don't, I don't think. I don't think it's a big deal. Um, you won't get in trouble. I mean, how many things are there? There's a treasurer. We didn't do it that long. Yeah, we did it like in the summer, didn't we? I feel like it wasn't very long ago. Maybe that was just Jeremy taking over for. Maybe for Sarah. Maybe, maybe that's because we were late. <laughs> maybe. And uh, now we're back on track. We're starting off the new year. Are we back on track? <laughs> yeah, it's on the agenda. <laughs> A track, yeah. <laughs> if you want to wait to have more people in attendance, you can wait. You can address it today. You could continue it. it. Put it to put it to bed. Um, so we're supposed to vote uh, individually. 
I, I think I remember reading that in the, uh, in the <laughs> okay. um, so for um, for treasurer, are you still interested in being treasurer? Yeah. Anyone else? All right, are we ready for uh, a vote on that? I don't think so. I think we just say yay or nay. So, Mr. Degler? Aye. Aye. Or yay. Um, secretary? You do do a really good job, and I, and I mean yeah. that seriously, not because I would yeah. never want to do it, but I don't, even want to, <laughs> I don't even want to joke about it. <laughs> so, um, Mr. Rhodes, yes, yay, yay. Yay. I, yeah, yay. Brian, are you itching for vice chair? No. <laughs> yep. Yep. Yay. Aye. Yay. Chair? I think you're doing a pretty Scott. good job, buddy. Easy. <laughs> <laughs> I'll vote for myself. Yes. Yes. <laughs> All right. Excellent. We'll revisit that next January. Unless we change the rules and procedures tonight. <laughs> we'll look at it monthly. Any new business to come before the commission? I don't think that I have any either. I apologize to anyone who I'm forgetting. Uh, old business review of rules and procedures. I provided a red line copy from notes from the last meeting. I may have missed something. I don't know for sure. Um, I can go over the edits that I provided, and I did provide some follow-up on questions that you guys had had. Um, one of them had been about um, appointments to the commission, and it does, in the RSA and our charter, indicate that the um, mayor brings it forward. Um, it's nominated by the mayor. Um, so that would be consistent to stay. Um, I provided alternate language from the RS6. I think there was some question regarding if that was currently accurate or not. Um, and I provided for reference for you all, because um, it's pulled from some information, the um, Conservation Commission's RSA and um, Barbara from Finance provided me with the resolution that indicates how current use funds are um, dispersed to the commission, how that is governed. I wasn't sure. I didn't put that into the rules of procedure, per se, at this point. Um, so I wasn't sure how you'd want that worded if it was in there. Um, I did go over these with Director Mears as well. She recommended, and um, based off of our conversation, under I, which is, starts on page five, there we um, are proposing to remove some stuff because this language is covered in um, the site plan and subdivision um, regulations. So to us, this felt like a place where it would hide and not get updated appropriately it's not something that is it's not as visible of a document compared to the sub site and subdivision regulations um it was previously in the zoning ordinance had been removed is in there because it allows a little more um flexibility and things like that for plans so we did put in to remove um like it just talks about what kind of documentation is supposed to be provided with the cup because it's redundant information but if there's additional edits that you'd like me to make, please let me know. I like uh, the work that you did. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thorough and informative. Um, regarding the alternates, um, 
I would still like to tweak the wording so that uh, we would strike. So currently it reads, one alternate member may be appointed following the procedure for membership to serve whenever a regular member of the commission is not able to fulfill their responsibilities. So I, I would propose to strike to serve um, and strike not able to fulfill their responsibilities. It's kind of it just it's a little bit vague and I just don't like it. Um, so to replace that with and vote if uh, a member is absent or disqualified. Because I, I also don't, I think the way that it stands, it also in, implies that an alternate doesn't do all the same things that a regular member does um, other than vote. And I think that they, they do. The only difference is that they don't vote. Mm hmm and that sounds pretty consistent with how the RSA language speaks. Um, would you be favorable I updating it to say to rather than one alternate, just alternate members, um, similar to how the RSA reads? Because it you could have more than one alternate member sitting in for regular members. Oh, it doesn't limit that to one. No, the RSA just says alternate members may be appointed in a like manner, and when alternate serves in a absence or disqualification, regular member, the alternate shall have full voting powers. Yeah, then definitely we should change it to plural. Um, yeah, you change the may to must. Mm -hmm. And under finances, can we note the, um, the resolution number in the procedure? Yep. Um, do you want it under city funds? Um, yeah, that would be good. Okay. Do you like the wording as, um, I have it in a comment for, as outlined in resolution, resolution number 2806, the disposition of revenues okay. from just referencing it that way. Yeah, I didn't realize that, that you're proposing adding that to the actual it's text. Rather vaguely stated there, so that's fair. No, I think that's I think that's good. Glad that you found that. So then you change the time from seven to six. Mm -hmm. And The minutes from six days to five days. It's consistent with the current RSA. Yeah. Um, so section I, the, the removal of those requirements. Um, I'd like to find a way to make it more visible or accessible um, to look at the uh, conditional use permit requirements. Um, like, can can a URL be placed in here or something? Sure, we could link the site. So I have it referenced looping to say that it's in the site regs and the subdivision regs. We can just link them to that as a for the document. Yeah. Yeah, that would be good. The only concern I have for that is um, my concern would be for when we update them, we update them probably more often than rules of procedure get looked at. So I would worry that that would actually get killed. So I'm not sure that that would be. We can go stale, but we're going to revisit this. Periodically, yeah. Okay. Yep. And um, I'd like to add that if um, if those uh, if that application is incomplete, that the app, that the commission may deem it incomplete um, 
and and vote uh, on that. So, my, so the last paragraph in that section says that if plans and application are not acceptable, commission shall instruct the applicant as to where revisions need to be made and table application until oh, next scheduled okay. meeting. Do you All want right. to modify that? No, that's good. Okay. Yeah, it's good for me. What's our Braille, Scott? Got nothing. All right, uh, shall we vote on uh, adopting it? Do you have to wait where there's additional edits till next? Your uh, rules of procedure say that you have to <laughs> <laughs> wait until the next regular meeting. Yes. I'll bring it back next month. <clears throat> Just be really educated in them now. Yeah. Okay, item B, review of the recommended native tree list proposed <clears throat> revisions. Uh, Mr. Collins is not here, so I'm not sure whether this is ideal to do now or... What's that? Yeah, do, you th do you think so? Yeah. Yeah. Is that a motion? Yeah. I'll second that. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. <clears throat> Easement monitoring. I have nothing. Anyone else have anything? Correspondence regarding old business. Member items, subcommittee items, and reports. Wildlife management plan for Lily Pond parcel. I don't have any update. Invasives uh, plan subcommittee report. Um, Ms. Smith Kenyon is not here. Exploration of formal concept. Uh, so. And then the beaver or beavers are doing a lot of damage. I mean, there's a lot of trees down now, saplings, um, small trees. So that's something that we're going to probably have to think about doing something about at some point, too. Um, so I contacted somebody with the Dam Bureau and to see, you know, kind of like what what is, you know, can can somebody inspect it, what, you know. And because it's under six feet tall, and they had no record, they were great to work with. Um, I sent them a GPS or the G GPS points of the dam, and they couldn't. They they overlaid it with their GIS data, couldn't come up with anything. Uh, so no record of of who built it or when or anything like that. So that means essentially that the future of that dam is to the city then you know anything that we want it to do if, if, it, if it was removal leave it as is uh, that would be up to us they would have no comment on any of that so i think that's a done deal figuring out the you know the, the status of the dam we'd have to figure out exactly what we want to do about it um, moving forward i, I still haven't read the, the trail uh report <clears throat> yeah. i will sure but did they weigh in on the dam at all yeah, that was there. That's why I went to look at it again and reached out to these folks. There, I think their concern it wasn't really safety. Um, that that may have been a part of it, but so you know, right below the dam, we would have to do boardwalks at least or something to cross there. And so if we did that, and then the dam burst or whatever, you know, we we could lose materials. Um, that was my take on what they were 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 suggesting or why they were suggesting to engage an engineer um, to to judge the safety. So I was hoping the Dam Bureau would come and, you know, give us some recommendations, but because of the height restriction or not, or the height limit, uh, and then just no historic information, it, it defaults to us to make a decision on. And uh, what did you mean by undercut? So when you, 
if you remember out there, there, there was a part that looked like somebody walked across and hacked at it. So there was part of the cement was missing where maybe there was a gate or something even at one point. I don't think I was with the party at that point. We caught okay. up afterward. Well, so if you walk out a little bit um, on the cement wall, the retaining wall or whatever it would be called, the dam, uh, sort of in the middle where like just above that where that bridge is that was somebody <laughs> that we don't know the origin of uh, there's damage there at the top so it looked like it was purposeful damage to maybe release some water uh, that was my guess recent I don't know no I don't think so I mean it was okay. just broken up cement and and I couldn't see good enough that if it, it, it could have been that there was a gate there too that the gate was cut out or yeah. broken out or whatever so at that point, so that was last last spring, I think, um, I didn't really look at the bottom of the dam. It didn't even occur to me to, but there's also a lot of vegetation there. So now it it looks like the the cement wall has been undercut, so there's that water had moved below it and cut it, Part parts of it. Is there scouring below the dam, or? What do you mean by that? Uh, where, where the dam was undercut, is there enough current that it's cutting away at the? Well, so there's really no current because the so, it, and if I'm remembering right from when we were first there, the it seemed like the beaver were just reinforcing the area where, that had been cut at the top, you know, and a little bit more, but but it was almost right against the the cement. But now, and I think it's because of the undercut, that's my guess, I have no real expertise on this, they had to push out and, and go down as well because the concrete's not holding anymore. Um, that's all guesswork on my part. Yeah. But so it changes the, the story for if the beaver go too, you know, then I think the dam, uh, we probably lose some level of wetland back there because it won't be holding, you know. Sure, yeah. So, so has the um, has the stream uh, width changed at all or, or the pond size? Uh, the pond was definitely up from before, you know, but we had also had a number of significant rain events. Um, it I didn't see, I walked a little way down. It wasn't like the stream banks had been undercut anymore, like noticeably undercut and trees are in or anything like that. Uh, you know, I think a worst case scenario, right, if, if it all failed, there would be probably some, some damage close up, but then that, you know, it would all just sort of go back to a drainage. Well, there's, there's quite a bit of flood plain, I would call it, on the opposite side of the stream that, uh, down down yeah downstream from the dam yeah yeah i mean i think that that all would be impacted and things would change but i don't know yeah i don't know it's hard to say there's a lot of water there yeah. there is that and so it, it could be a significant event at one point and then normalize again to what was pre-dam i guess which would certainly mean the shrinkage of some of those wetlands that have developed behind the pond too mm -hmm. Um, and so, so if the if the beavers were allowed to continue their work, right, um, mm -hmm. remain, um, they're <clears throat> they're toward the pond in regard to the to the concrete dam, right? They're on that side. Correct. So as you drop down, you know, from the you go around the <clears throat> the dump, you know, where people the like the where random stuff was dropped. Yeah. All of that's been hit now, and it goes back um, towards the fields and then down the stream. So there's a beaver trail going right through the dump area now. So they're, mm -hmm. and they're going over to where uh, adjacent to the, um, or parallel to the, to the stream now. So there are no small trees left in there at all anymore. Really? Um, well, maybe they took some autumn olive. <laughs> send them uphill um so yeah i mean it's it, you know it's a significant impact for sure especially over time and and this was just 
uh, that's that's happened. It didn't look that bad when we were on the the tour that you were on, and then the one in the in the uh, whenever that was early summer with the with the um, trail consultants. So not necessarily bad, but it would um, affect our our decision on whether and where to put a trail and a boardwalk. Yeah, or, or maybe like what kind of, you know, yeah, how we would approach that, you know, in case they were to get a, a water release, you know. Um, I think what would be good is to have maybe somebody reach out to Extension or something to, for, to a wildlife biologist and have a discussion about the, the sort of ecology of that area and what, what would happen with the different options. So I think I'll do that. I'll read, see if I can track somebody down. I'll contact for you. I took a okay. course at a, or a, a seminar at NHACC conference with a Fish and Game okay. for beavers. Awesome. Yeah, send me that and I'll try to set something up. Because um, then really, you know, that, that'll kind of drive some of the other decisions now that we know the dam is our responsibility. Um, there was a fair bit of blowdown from the last windstorm on the upper side near Old Indigo Hill Road that already had a lot of blowdown. Uh, so it's it's closed off that part of the trail even more. Uh, I've kind of approached it as that that's maybe not a bad thing at this point, you know, because we we haven't opened it all up for for trails or for you know, I mean it's open, but I don't know how open we want to make it and accessible right now before we fix some things. Um, that's really it. I was thinking about sending out a message to see if anybody wanted to go out and, and talk about some of the options for laying out the trail a little different where, uh, where it was recommended to do that for switchbacks and things. So that, that, that's probably the next thing just to try to get set up for when we do move forward, we'll, we'll have some of the easy things knocked out. Yeah, I, I'll go out with you. I'll okay. get a point to read the report. Okay. Um, I think that's it. Uh, that's, a, that's everything I can think of anyways for that. So. Yeah, I might like to go out with you also, Kevin. Yeah, I'll send it out to the sub. We have a subcommittee, but I'll, right. I'll send it to the group. So, One thing that I was thinking of when you were talking about the dam <clears throat> is if it's determined at some point that the dam is to be removed mm -hmm. and let the water cascade down, I think it w that would have to be one of the first things that had to be done you don't want to go building your stream crossings and then open the dam and let them wash the bridges out that you just built or what you had proposed as a 20-foot bridge now became a 30-foot bridge. Yep, no doubt. The I mean, the only thing that could go in really uh, would be like boardwalks, you know, right. and, and that is that that was one of the suggestions for there was a series of of boardwalks and you know so <laughs> you know we we could still go that route but we'd have to think about anchoring and things like that a little bit more but i mean i think if you know if it comes back from um extension that the beaver should be removed that effectively is going to change you know that's there, there'll be some time where that dam will still hold but at some point the beaver work is going to go and then the dam's not set up to hold water anymore. If if I was reading it right, again, I'm no expert. I'm just looking from the one side, and I can see under, you know, so. I'm inclined to say if the beers are, I mean, they're, they're not encroaching on any structure or anything. Let them do their thing. and um... it, It's a tough call for me. I... You know, I, I, I never want to move towards trapping or anything like that. I just fundamentally don't like that. But when you're out there, you'll see, like, the future of, of the, the forest and regrowth, at least on the field side, is, is certainly at risk, mm -hmm. you know. And they're just going to keep moving downstream to cut, mm -hmm. to cut trees, and then they're going to move on the other side too. So. Yeah. I don't know. That's what I. That's why I'd like to get somebody else out there. Maybe you, to you me, you lose the forest and, and you gain the wetland. You know. Uh, I don't know. I. I think. I mean, yes, but there's going to be a lot of erosion and law. You know, and and a widening of that. I. I don't know. I don't know that that's a fair approach. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I, I think that 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 would be considerable changes there, but. 
Um, we, we should go out there, and, and it could be that I'm, I'm overestimating what's occurring, but I've seen Beaver do this in other places, and, and there is just, there's already such stress on young trees anyways, over, you know, we have overbrowsing, all that, so now there we're even losing these sort of, you know, um, they're, they're up from a sapling, but they're not overstory trees yet, so. Um, but yeah, it would be good to talk it through as a group and, and have some information from a wildlife biologist and what the future might hold there. You know, so. We get to have uh, Mr. Collins there with us too. Okay. We can get him. <clears throat> All right, thank you. Yep. Are you ready? Uh, item four, tree city, uh, I'm sorry, <laughs> city tree. GPS inventory report or project. Sorry, it's getting right. Mr. Breyer, I we got I got your uh, your email um, and haven't had a chance to look at the spreadsheet yet. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, what I sent out, sent out today to everyone was uh, what the most recent uh, file that I've received from Amber Hall with all of the streets and what the city acknowledges as the right-of-ways for those streets. Um, what's good about this uh, format that she sent me is some of the longer streets that have multiple different right-of-ways is broken down into segments. So from you know, Main Street to this street is such a distance and, and so forth. So, that'll, so you might see this one street four different times, but it's four different sections of the street. Uh, my understanding is that's pretty much the final right-of-way list that we're going to get. Okay. Um, Did you say you sent that out to all of us? This afternoon. I don't, I don't have it. 108. I can forward it. Yeah, I don't know. Sometimes... There you go. <laughs> Maybe we need a new list of okay. Um, see the other th the other item I looked at a few weeks ago, not a few looked at, but I spoke with Jackson Caspari, who I guess is I'm not sure what his title is now. I think at one point he worked for SRPC, and he was involved. I don't know if he's on one of the boards for the city of Dover. But he was involved in their tree inventory, basically trying to find out how they're how they're using it, how they're updating it, um, who's doing it. It's a public works department or whatever. Um, did get a lot of information. As far as he knows, he's not sure that anybody is updating that list or has <coughs> since it came out from the SRPC. Mm. What he is trying to do is, I guess the city of Dover is trying to hire a college intern to update their database and, and various other functions, but this would be one of his, his functions. Um, but what uh, Jackson was telling me was that they have planted somewhere between 70 and 90 additional trees in their area they inventoried and none of them have been entered into the database. Mm. So there isn't it. Again, the, they have a problem with staffing, <laughs> like everybody else. That yeah. boards and, uh, so they're hopefully going to have this uh, student update that system and kind of work on it. But well, I think if if for nothing else, it's probably worth doing just. As an artifact to have a baseline say here here are the trees that we had at mm -hmm. whatever date and um, it's implied that anything that's not on that list was planted since um, but to show you know the, the condition of the trees that that were present at the time um, that could inform you know future uh, plans
Yeah, I agree. I mean, I think, you know, it gives us a baseline for, you know, 2024 20, or whenever it would happen. And I, I don't know. I, I don't think updating it maybe is that big of a deal. You know, I mean, you want it updated, but when did Dover do theirs? Four or five years ago? Uh, it's probably more like three, three, four. Yeah, so they didn't update it in three years. I mean, if you do another inventory in five years, I mean, I you know, ideally, right, right, a tree gets replaced, somebody enters it, but it's not the end of the world if it's a couple years when you're talking about, you know, things that are probably, they're probably tracking them uh, anyways for, so just for early maintenance after planting. So, uh, you know, and maybe that's something that, we maintain as a conservation commission that we are the ones that update it and that's the you know the agreement that we have moving forward because i don't know i mean how many plant how many trees do you think the city plants a year you know it can't be that not, many not a lot handful yeah i think for for these annual or <coughs> for tasks that need to be revisited regularly that we probably should include in the plan that somebody on the commission um, is responsible for bringing it up at a certain time of year. Yep. I'm fine doing it, putting it on my calendar, but um, somebody should pick up that task so that it doesn't get lost. Yep. Mm -hmm. I think the big biggest part of it is what, what we're gonna use to track it. If we're gonna use this GIS system as a layer it might be a bigger learning curve than, you know, having a spreadsheet or something. Uh, I think it's helpful. I think the GIS layer would be helpful. Yeah, I probably wouldn't do it without GIS. You know, I mean, you want you want to have the spatial location of individual trees to be able to query. Maybe yeah. depend. Yeah, I mean, um, maybe have both. Maybe have the GIS for say a three year period, but you can maintain a spreadsheet that every three years you update it into the GIS system. Sure, yeah. So I guess it my as a tool for populating the GIS yeah. system. So I guess my next thing will be to get a hold, try to get a hold of that uh, data application they built, find out if it's something they can just give us or if something we have to <coughs> buy or. Okay. I think um, I can check with uh, Liz Durfee on that. I believe she's the one that uh, it was given to her from as far as SRPC to use for Durham. So I don't know if it's something that we can just borrow. Or so what do you foresee for any actions in this um, in this project that will require funding? Uh, you know, because we should start preparing for that as soon as possible or as early as possible in the in the plan yeah see yeah, that's kind of hard to, to determine um i think the numbers i gave you before included a summary on their uh, dover's water i'm not sure what it was called um it was it was a report that liz durfee made up and i think that was Somewhere in the vicinity of eleven thousand mm -hmm. dollars total cost, so I don't think it's going to be anywhere near that. Yeah, I mean it's it's sort of a um, a grab bag of things that we could do. Yeah. Um, but at some point we should <laughs> nail down what we want included, and then figure out what it will cost, if anything. Yeah. I think, well, based on my uh, discussion. Uh, Jackson Brand, I think it was, SRPC. He's mm -hmm. saying they can build the data set for somewhere between one and two thousand dollars, and it would be a matter of, I don't know if that included the updating, the information that we get, or if that would be an additional charge. So, yeah. Um, okay. Could you could you come up with? Um, an itemization of potential costs and then we can determine whether we need to look for um, grant funding or whether we want to take it out of our 
find. Yeah. That would be helpful. Alright. Thank you. Is there a treasurer's report? There is. <clears throat> Our balance forward was $258,393.01. Um, interest received was $1,205.29 for an ending balance of $259,598.30. Did we miss anything? All right. Does anyone have a motion? I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Meeting is adjourned at 824.